Hey Shirt Callers and Certified Installers, Adam Dutch here once again for our final episode focusing on the site survey and how to conduct a complete site survey. So we're gonna go through every single one of the questions, kind of talk about why those questions are important, how to possibly acquire the answers, and uh, by the end of the time that we spend together, you'll be ready to go out and tackle those site surveys on your own. Now, many of these questions are going to be able to be answered by your customer. You don't have to necessarily even step foot on the property, but there are a couple of questions that you are going to need to actually go on site to find out the answers for. While there are quite a few questions on this site survey, there are five that are crucial, that need to be answered without deviation, and they need to be answered completely. I call them the big five. Once we're done going through all of the different questions, we'll go ahead and focus on those big five so that you have a better understanding of how to acquire those answers. So we're gonna start from the beginning, and when we get to the end, we'll stop. First question, which carrier or carriers are you looking to enhance signal for? Now a lot of situations call for multiple carriers being represented inside of a building, but it's quite possible that your customer has either a corporate account or a preferred vendor for their cellular communications. It's going to be very important that you indicate who that carrier is so we can make sure that the customer is happy and has that specific carrier inside the building. Question number two, are only voice or voice and 4G data required? Now this can sometimes be a misleading question because if the customer already has Wi-Fi inside the building, it's quite possible that they do not need 4G coverage. However, if they have 4G calling on their carrier's network, then you will need to have that 4G coverage as well. And keep in mind that the Force 5 from SureCall is the only booster on the market that currently supports voice over LTE. Question number three, how many cell users are there expected to be? One of the quick things about this particular question is that what we are trying to establish is densification or capacity needs. If you have a building that has 20 people in there at any one point in time, it's quite possible that not all of those people are going to be on their phone at the same time. And by knowing the expected number of simultaneous users in a facility, that allows us to choose or to suggest one booster over another. What is the city, state, and zip code where the booster is going to be installed? This information is crucial if we are trying to find out where the cellular towers are in a specific location. Question number five, and this is one of the big five questions. What is the total square footage of the building? Now, while we may not necessarily be covering the entire facility, we do need to know the total amount of square footage. Question number six, another one of the big five. What are the approximate dimensions of the building? While on the floor plans, you could possibly have a scale or there may even be some indications as to what the length and the width of the building are, that information still needs to go on the site survey, especially if you're gonna be using SureCall's design services. So please make sure that you go that extra mile and go ahead and calculate those dimensions, put them onto this form during this question. Question number seven is asking what the internal structure of the building looks like. This is gonna be important during the design process because if there's a lot of metal and or concrete, it could possibly require more boosters and more antennas. So we wanna make sure that we are aware of that early to make sure that we request and suggest the correct amount of boosters and antennas from the very beginning. Question number eight is pretty self-explanatory. What are the ceilings and the floors made of? Are they concrete? Are they slate? Are they just wood? We need to know this information when we are deciding how many boosters and antennas to go ahead and put in the design. In some cases, if the ceilings are only made out of wood, then it's quite possible for us to use panel or directional antennas to shoot through multiple floors so you can get more coverage with less antennas. Question number nine, is there existing coaxial cable in the building? If so, 
what size? This is gonna be an important question because if there already is a system in place and we are simply looking to upgrade or change that system to a SureCall brand, we may need to know about that cable, especially if your customer wants to reuse that cable. Now, it's not always a great idea to reuse old cable, but if we can, we absolutely will. Some common sizes for coaxial cable are going to be 400 or 600, which is what SureCall typically uses. There is also RG type cable, like RG6 and RG11. The big difference between these two different types of cable is that an RG cable has a 75 ohm resistance to the signal, while the coaxial cable in the 400 and 600 range only have a 50 ohm resistance to that signal traveling through. Because of that ohms resistance difference, the 400 grade cable has half the amount of loss as your typical RG cable. Question number 10. This is another one of the big five questions. What is the DB signal strength outside of the building? Everything starts or ends with that outside signal strength. If we don't have enough signal to begin with, then the amplifier essentially is not going to have enough signal to work with. The boosters do not generate their own signal, so they are solely reliant on the quality of that outside signal. So we have to know what that is. Depending on that signal, we'll also determine how much square footage will be covered total. As we've mentioned in multiple other videos and also in the certified installer training, it is crucial that you not use your phone to find out this information. You need to either use a spectrum analyzer or something like SureCall's RF signal meter to find out this information. If you'd like a little bit more information about SureCall's RF signal meter, then you can feel free to go to our website or you can go ahead and check out our how-to video um, about how to use that SureCall signal meter on our YouTube channel. Question number 11 states, what are the ceilings made of and how tall are they? This will help us if we are considering doing the dome indoor antennas instead of the panel inside antennas. The dome antennas give a much wider hotspot than the panel antennas do. So if we can use the dome antenna, as we typically will. If you have ceilings that are 20 feet tall or less, consider using the dome antennas. Question number 12. Is there an ideal place to house the booster? If your customer has a specific place that they would like those boosters to be installed, then they need to indicate that information on the floor plans. While it may not always be practical to place the boosters in that specific area, it's nice to know that the customer has a preference and we want to try to be able to accommodate them as often as possible. Question number 13 says, what is the name of your company and what is your contact information? Question number 14 is your opportunity to put any kind of special requirements or instructions. For instance, if your customer has plenum space, we need to know that information so that on the bill of materials, once we're done with our design process, we can go ahead and add plenum rated cable to that bill of materials. Plenum rated cable could be very expensive and we wanna make sure that our customer knows and understands that that is something that they need to take into consideration when going through the bidding process. And finally, the last question states, what distributor are you currently buying SureCall product through? Since SureCall does not deal direct to the end user, it's important to indicate which distributor you are going through so we can make sure that we make that connection between you, the distributor, and the design and bill of materials that we have suggested. So in review, remember we had talked about the big five. The big five questions are as follows. These are questions that need to be answered completely or the design cannot be completed. Question number five, which asks what is the square footage of the building? Question number six, dimensions, dimensions, dimensions. We need them calculated, we need them on this form so we know how long our cable lengths are so we're not running 200 or 300 feet of cable. Question number 10, what is the DB signal strength outside the building? Once again, everything starts and ends with how much signal we can get into the booster. Question number 11, ceiling height and composition. We need to know how tall these ceilings are so we know whether to suggest the dome type antenna or a panel type antenna. The design suggestion between a dome based system and a panel based system can be wildly different. And the last question in the big five is, where do you want the booster to go? 
So I hope that this series that we've done concerning the site survey has been beneficial. I hope that you've learned a lot. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch these videos and to really invest in learning how to go through these processes correctly. And we're excited for where you're going to take your business with the SureCall brand. I also want to thank you so much for subscribing. And I want to remind you that this is the last in this site survey series. So make sure you leave a comment and let me know what you'd like me to cover next. Have a great rest of the day. And thank you for using SureCall to help raise your bars.